Let's stand for one more word of prayer before we get into the word, if you will. And while your head is bowed, how many of you have an unspoken request you'd like for us to pray with you about? Okay, let's pray. <clears throat> Father, we know that uh, we can come boldly uh, to the throne of grace and find help in time of need. And so, Father, I know that our congregation in different ways uh, have problems and difficulties and family uh, situations and uh, all of that. But we know that our Heavenly Father is far greater than any of our problems. And our Heavenly Father wants to take us from where we are to where He wants us to be. So, Lord Jesus, we want to give ourselves uh, to You completely. And so, Father, I pray now that as we look into the book, uh, the Word of God, and begin in chapter 28 of Matthew, I pray that we'll look at this thing as we think about how to pray for the lost. And we certainly need to do that, and then we need to go after the lost. And so I pray that as we look into this passage of Scripture tonight, that we'll let the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God, reach down into our heart, down into our mind, and help us to always be looking for those uh, that have never been born again. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, Matthew 18, 18 and 20 <clears throat> will be our text. Matthew 18, 28, I'm sorry, <clears throat> 18 to 20. Now watch what these verses say because they're written to you and I. Now, of course, a pastor ought to uh, look at these verses, practice it, Members should do the very same thing. Now, I know what happens. You say, well, preacher, how, I, I can't do that. I, I can't do that. Uh, there's all kinds of uh, uh, books and, and uh, there's different things that we can use to teach ourselves. And, of course, we have soul winning courses here at our church because we need to know how to reach out to the lost. Now, I want you to think with me as we look in Matthew 20. 8, down in verse 18, how to pray for the lost. Now, I want to ask you a question, <clears throat> and you answer this yourself. When was the last time you prayed for a man or a woman or a young person, and you said, Lord, Kathy is not saved. She'll go to hell if she dies. Lord Jesus, Jimmy is not saved. If he dies, he'll go to hell forever and ever. Now think with me for a second. Look at me for just a second. How would you feel if you were told by your son or your daughter, Dad, Mom, I'm not saved, and I don't intend to be saved? I've seen that happen. I've heard that. I've, I've been in situations like that. Uh, we know, and you know, of one of our Man, Lou knows him very well, and so forth and so on. And he sent me a little letter this, this week. And he said, Bob, this is the reason I can prove to you that there is no hell or heaven. And uh, you know what I said to him? I called him by name, and I said, yeah, you can say whatever you want to, but that's not going to stop me from praying for you. We've been friends for years. And I appreciate you, and I thank you for what uh, we've done together. We've had some good times together, but I want you to be in heaven. There is no heaven, and I can prove it to you. And I thought to myself, my soul, my soul. And uh, most of the people in here, I'm just not going to mention the name, but most of the people in here know who he is. And I've been praying every day, and my wife does the same thing. And so we want to do that. But now we're going to talk about how to pray, <clears throat> excuse me, for the lost. But notice what Jesus says here in Matthew 28, beginning in verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying. <clears throat> now listen to this. All power or all authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Now you might say something like this, oh yeah, I, I, I agree with that. Yeah, I agree with that. Okay, but you know what? That ought to do something more than cause you to say that. If my Lord said that, he must mean something. He must have something he wants 
me to follow through with. And that's right. Watch it now. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All authority or all power is given to me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore. That's it right there. That's the great commission. Go ye therefore. Please forgive me if I sometimes I relent and say something about something that happened to me at a younger life. But the reason I do that is because it does it, it did something to me down in my soul that's lasted me until now. Wayne Williams taught us teenagers in our church where he was a pastor to be a witness, to be a soul winner. I mean, he taught us. And we would stand up in church, and the girls would be over here, the guys would be over here, and Wayne would say, Matthew chapter 16, verse 21, April. And boy, these, the girls would come right on through. Then he'd turn to the men. Jim, this is your verse. Ba -ba -ba -ba. He got it. And those guys and those gals had memorized verse after verse after verse. They had memorized the word of God. And they led many people to the Lord Jesus Christ because of it. Now, that's what Jesus wants you and I to do. He wants us to be a soul winner. And when he gives this commission, yes, he's giving it to the apostles here. But he's also sending it out to you and to me. And it came to pass unto them, saying, All power is given unto me, all authority is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye. Boy, go ye. How many Baptists are going, do you think? How many Christians are going, do you think? Uh, we had, uh, Sue and I were visiting a young man and a young lady and a mother and another lady there in their house. Uh, they've been coming to here from visiting. They said they're going to start coming regularly we next week, I believe it is. And we were standing there talking, and they were talking about men and women that they know that need to be saved. And I said to them, I said, where are they? And they said, well, some of them is in this complex and some are not. And I said, well, are you going out to them? And they said, well, brother, we need a little more help. We need a little more teaching. If we can get it, we it's that kind of talk, you know? And uh, so uh, pray that they'll listen to that and they'll get in, involved in it. Can you imagine if we had 20, 30 men and women in this church that was soul conscious. Now get that phrase, soul conscious. Uh, now now don't, please don't misunderstand. When I go to the mall, I go every day except Sunday, and I walk around it once or twice, but when I go in there, I'll say in my mind, Lord Jesus, I want to be soul conscious today. Lead me to someone that I can witness to. And he's been opening up that opportunity. Now sometimes they won't even say anything to you. They'll just walk away. They'll cuss you. All of those things. But when I walk away there, you know what I can say? I can say, Lord, I want to keep that up. I want to keep that up. So Jesus is concerned about you and I going out after the loss. And so he says... And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All authority is given unto me in heaven and on earth. Go ye, therefore, and teach all nations. Now, obviously, that's not just me. That's this whole church. That's Christianity and so forth and so on. Teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost. Now, here's the word. Teaching them to observe. All things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you unto the end of the world, amen, or the end of the age, amen. We need to pray for the lost. Now, let me give you a few thoughts tonight from this passage of Scripture. Number one, number one, ask God to give you a burden for lost people. Ask God to give you a burden for lost people. Now, I want you to turn over to Romans chapter 9. The book of Romans chapter 9. 
I brought my big Bible tonight, and it uh, is a little bit more difficult uh, to get to than my smaller Bible, or the one that I use all the time. But this matter of going, but listen now, going, but going with a burden. Now, the book of Romans, chapter 9. I'll get there in a moment. All right, Romans chapter 9, verses 1 through 3. Look at these verses. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. Now listen to this. My conscience, also bearing me witness to the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart, for I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Somebody has gotten a burden. And of course, that's the Apostle Paul reaching out to others to try to get people to follow him in this matter of reaching out to the lost. Now, let's read these verses again. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost that I have great heaviness and great continual sorrow in my heart, for I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. So now you think about that. Ask God to give you a burden. Now look at chapter 10, verse 1 of the book of Romans. Chapter 10, verse 1. Brethren... My heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. That's something, isn't it? My brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Have I ever said that? How many times have I ever said that about someone or a family? See what we're getting at here? The Lord is talking to us in the New Testament about going after the lost. Have you ever given really deep thought of what hell's really like? Now, it's not the same for everyone. There's levels of sorrow and heartache and and they'll be there forever and forever and forever and ever. And maybe some of those could have been avoided from going to hell because, but maybe someone just didn't reach out. And so I want to reach out, and I know that you do too. So verse chapter 10 and verse 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge, but not according to knowledge. Now go back to Matthew chapter 9. The book of Matthew chapter 9. And I hope that you will let this sink down in. I know I want it to sink down in uh, my heart. And I want to listen to what these verses have to say to you and to me. Matthew chapter 9 again. Now, when we get to Matthew chapter 9... I want you to go up with me to verse 38 and 39. And he that taketh not his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it, and he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. You know what he's saying? He's saying, I want you to pour out your heart. I want you to be the best witness that you can be. Matthew chapter, that's chapter 10, and I'm sorry if you had this big Bible like I did. But anyway, that's what I'm getting at here. Now let me say this again. What was the last time, the last time that you witnessed? The last time that I witnessed? And we're going to give an account to the Lord for that. Now let me give you chapter 38 again. And he that taketh not his cross and follow after me 
is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it, and he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. That's a pretty strong verse, isn't it? That is a pretty strong verse. All right? Ask God to give a burden for the lost soul. The next thing, claim laborers for the harvest, Matthew 9 and verse 38. The third thing, seek God for opportunities from your congregation. Seek God from our, for opportunities and make it daily from the congregation. Even the short number we have here tonight, I'm sure a number of you know of people that have never been born again. You know some people that think they're saved, but they don't know whether they are or not. Well, that's not good enough. That's just not good enough. I want to know beyond any shadow of a doubt that I'm saved. And then when I start witnessing to people, I want them to be able to tell me with authority. Notice what I said? With authority that I know that I am Save. Now put down Colossians chapter 2, verses 2 through 4. Colossians chapter 2, verses 2 through verse 4. The next thing, write this down if you will. Number 4. Receive in praise the promise of fruit. John 15 and verse 16. That verse promises that if you and I will go out, We'll come again rejoicing, bringing our sheaves with us. That's what it says in that verse. I, I, I've used that verse for years and years and years. That's John 15, 16. Number five. Listen now. Rep repent of fear in witnessing and petition God for church-wide boldness in witnessing. And you know Ephesians 6, 17 through 20. You know those verses. We need to be men and women that want to bear fruit, like we said in John 15. We want to repent of the fear of witnessing and petitioning our Lord for the church's boldness. And I hope that you'll do that. I'm going to do that every day this week. I'm going to keep doing it every day this week. Then, a church-wide boldness in witnessing. And let me give you another verse, Acts 4, 31 and 32. And then number six. This is very important here. Beseech God to give us power to win the lost, Acts 1, 8. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you will be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost part of the earth. I memorized that verse at Tennessee Temple University, and I haven't forgotten it since. And then Colossians 1 and verse 28, where he's talking about, beseech God, give us power to win the lost. And then lastly, listen now, believe God for conviction of sin. Believe God for conviction of sin. Acts 2, 37 and 38. Acts 2, 37 and 38. Now, I know that's a lot in a short time, but I don't want to go back and, and talk to Sue, see how she's doing. But you've got an outline now, and uh, if you would like for Sue to work you out one uh, later on, we'd be happy to do that. Uh, but I think you get the idea here. I think you get the idea here. Um, so let's take the gospel to every lost person or to people we don't know whether they're saved or lost. All right, let's stand, please, and we'll be dismissed in prayer.